Wow. 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 No, you gotta do it like him. Wow. Wow. It's way too loud. You probably broke the speaker. Wow. 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 Hi and welcome to the Ruby Tuesday. We are doing spoilers for an Amazon original movie called Bliss, starring Salma Hayek and Owen Wilson. Wow. It's about a, a non-reality, reality, weird, wacky, matrixy thingy. Is it real or isn't it real? And we're going to talk spoilers. So give us a thumbs up. Check out our non-spoiler review if you don't want a spoiler review. But for now, let's jump into it. Yeah. So I totally just want to jump into this and say, I don't know if they knew. <laughs> At the end of this film, if they actually had decided whether it was there was a reality or there wasn't a reality, yeah. whether there was a fictional space or there wasn't a fictional space. And I'm just going to point out right at the beginning of the film in his office, there was a wallet that digitized and disappeared. And that's my point. <laughs> that's your whole point. Explain it. OK. If, if, okay. It, if the digital world wasn't real, why the hell? So if it if it wasn't actually a construct, mm. yeah. So if Selma Hayek's character Isabel was actually not telling the truth, then that wallet would not have disappeared. Yeah, that's what we're saying. Because theoretically, he should only be going off his rockers once he starts taking those yellow tablets. Correct? No, because he was already a junkie. His children uh, have already established that. Well, they do later on in the film. Okay, but. Yeah, I don't know then. Is he losing his mind? <laughs> so either either you have a man who's having some sort of a mental breakdown and is on drugs, and then he meets this woman and she uh, feeds into that delusion that he's having, and together they go on a bit of a rampage, taking lots and lots of drugs and experiencing things that will... Um, what's the word? <sighs> Reinforce. So experiencing things that will reinforce their belief that they're living in a construct and that there is this alternate reality that is actually real. Yeah. And most other people in this simulation are not real, including his ex-wife and children mm. and his boss and, you know, all sorts of things. Um, yeah, so that's that's the one thing. Or it's all real and actually she has created this brain box and they are plugged into a simulation. But then what I don't understand is how, because they exited the simulation incorrectly, does the simulation begin to break into the real world? Yeah, I think that's because what they that were explaining really towards the sense. end. It's bleeding into the world. And that was kind of where they lost me. Even that bit in the film kind of lost me because they were taking their time with it. You know, like, we don't actually need this. We need more of an explanation of what you're trying to sell us in the story. Yeah. Um, and so when we... I think they were trying to leave it too open-ended. Yeah, possibly. So when they eventually did get back to the... I was left thinking, okay, so this is a drug addict. He's going to go to a rehabilitation place. He's kind of lost his mind. He doesn't even know if his daughter is really real. And the woman that he spent the last few weeks with on the streets living in the tent has just committed suicide. Yeah. Is that what they were going for? Is that what actually happened? That's a really, really bleak, dark story. <laughs> I don't know, because it was really interesting that the person who was uh, controlling the brain box, that particular character, was also the person who was in the, sh in the sort of um, digitized, shadowy form, talking to his daughter and saying, don't approach him yet, because he might be a bit volatile. Yeah. So... I'm like, and, what? And, and what? We hadn't, they, they hadn't established <laughs> that he'd gone to rehabilitation yet. So that we, they hadn't established that that character could be a doctor and say, don't approach him yet. Or they had found him in a tent. He could be volatile. He's, he's under a drug-induced moment. So maybe you can't approach him. I didn't recognize him as the guy leading the rehab clinic. No, Was I didn't it the either. same character? No, I don't think so. No. So that's what I mean. They haven't established that character as yeah. being a doctor or someone exactly. that knows where that that's, person is. That's so why what I was, was that moment about? Yeah. Or maybe what happened was that the director had a vision and then his vision was way too long. And so some of the meaning of this film ended up on the cutting floor. It's which possible. Is, it's which more is than kind possible. of what happens to a lot of films. So what, what we end up with, especially with films like this, <laughs> is moments in the fake world and moments in the real world. And you can choose which one you think are fake and real. But I think that's exactly the point they were trying to make because his daughter said that exact thing to him. It was like, at some point... You, you're going you're, to you're gonna have to choose. You live in this world and you live in this world. So which one are you going to decide is real? But you see, I think they chose for us. 
because yeah. I think there was a moment where he gave a speech at the end and he said, but you can find so many things even in this crappy world with the cops pouring down on us. Uh, even this is wonderful. The chaos of this world is wonderful. And so I feel like he was convincing himself of a reason to live, to stay in the present. Yeah. Hmm. So what do you think? Do you think there could be an alternate world? That's what they were saying. Because they mentioned, you know, my favorite, one of my favorite lines from The Matrix is ignorance is bliss. And they even mentioned that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, hmm. I mean, maybe that's why they called this film Bliss. Is it bliss to be uh, ignorant of the fact that you're living in a construct? Mm -hmm. uh, when it was at the end, it was in his rehabilitation. For instance, the first things, one of the first things the guy says, that, uh, "What is your bliss?" Yeah, we all, we, yeah. Hmm. Or I've forgotten what I was about to say, but it was good. <laughs> it's in the, it's in the other construct. Yeah. So, or is the bliss the real world? that you get so used to the, the magnificence and the glory and the, the cleanness and the wealth and opulence and all of that, that you take it for granted and you're no longer happy. Yeah. And that's no longer provides you with bliss. So you yeah. have to go back into the dirt and the grime. I mean, there is something to be said about that. How, how long when you go away somewhere on a holiday even, mm. and you come back to home, you're like, oh, I totally missed my home. I missed uh, my bed. I missed... My... Yeah, we definitely miss our beds when we go away. <laughs> so, there, I mean, it definitely has a thing to say. There's a lot of a deeper meaning. If you wanted to take yeah. and, and deconstruct it... You could. It, it could Probably be saying a lot better these, than us. Yeah. these things to you. Uh, I think we did all right. <laughs> uh, We're still confused. <laughs> well, I'm not so confused. I just think that they were confused. I think that they've definitely tried to leave it up to you, but I think they told us in a way... But they're also hoping that you would do what we're doing right now. Yes, discussing absolutely. I thought that was the point, to keep you slightly confused so that you think <laughs> about it for longer and make up your own mind. So let us know, what is your favorite film like this that leaves up to the end? Like, did it or didn't it? Uh, and what did you think? Was it or wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> what are you your any, theories? <laughs> do you have anything else to say, babe? Nah. All right. Um, thanks so much for watching this. Let us know in the comments below what you thought. But most of all, until next time, remember, live long and Tuesday. Tuesday.